Hello everyone and welcome to this session for Aussie Live Conference. Uh, we've got a great team, the Bucken team. I've read about you on Facebook and seen comments in webinars, etc. So we've got Kat, Matthews, Janita Lyon and Evelyn Schmidt. So we really look forward to hearing what you're going to say about connecting communities online and thank you for sharing your experiences. Um, we would also like to thank the sponsors and supporters of this conference because without them it would not be able to go ahead. So you can see we've got um, the Australia E-Series, the Learning Revolution, who have made a partnership for the conference, Blackboard Collaborate, Coach Carol, Cyber Academy and Shambles. All these people have put in a, a great deal of work or given a sponsorship to make it happen. We would love you now to have a look for that um, pointer tool. So if you look to the left of the white board, you've got to look for that pointer. Click on the pointer, click on one of the emoticons and drag it over to where you live. And I see someone's out in the ocean, maybe on a boat. Watch, oh, <laughs> we've gone to the actual state of Victoria. So we've got it, everyone here probably from Australia, are we? Anyway, we'll try and fill up the Australian segment. Thank you to those people who've come along. Oh, we've got um, Paul. Welcome, Paul, from India. Uh, Paul's been a record on a lot of our sessions, so great to have you. Okay, are we all done? So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Tanita and your team, and we'd love to hear about the Bucken Project. First of all, Evelyn will come to the microphone. I'd like to introduce Evelyn Schmidt, coordinator of the Bucken Neighbourhood House. Thank you, Janita, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're really pleased to present a project that we completed in the last two years that uh, went for an 18-month period, which we call the Bucken Project. It was through some funding that we'd received from the State Library of Victoria to create a connected community for a rural and isolated town in East Gippsland. We have about uh, 500 residents living in the district, about 120 people within the town. And we thought that by giving people skills um, using their computers that they could better connect and also um, talk with and, and share information with people outside of their community without having to travel. <coughs> Excuse me, as part of our project we established a few uh, sites including our, um, our website and also we put a sign up in the middle of our town to advertise to visitors to also come and visit our website um, to find out more information about our community and our people. Now I'm just wondering, um, part of our project thinks, oh, well, Janet is going to talk about this part. Um, sorry, I wasn't too sure how much more we are going to talk about, but some of the things that we really needed to do within our project is really give our people some basic IT skills um, and basic education and use of their computers so that they would feel more confident to then be able to join us um, on online or connected communities or using um, different sites online to find out information. So. We did quite a number of face-to-face -face sessions where we just asked people to come in, um, tell us what sort of information or what sorts of things that they would like to do on their computers or, or where they would like to connect to and we helped them with those, um, those questions and uh, assisted them to become more SA on using their computers. We also did an after school um, education program with after school tutors for our local primary children which went for a period of about six or eight months um, and then unfortunately due to losing our tutors uh, we were unable to continue with that project. Uh, we also created a very active Facebook page um, which started out with um, not a great deal of membership, but certainly by the end of our project we had about 400 people connecting and <coughs> talking on Facebook. Our community now is a really big user of Facebook with our football club and sporting clubs, um, businesses, 
all going onto Facebook and talking about the sorts of things that they're doing, um, advertising and sharing um, with photos. People are taking photos and putting it up there. Um, so it's been a really quick and easy way for people to communicate and share knowledge and, and um, information about themselves and their, their area. Thanks, Janita. Hello. Um, what happened there? We did this. I was just talking away and my mic was down. I apologise. Uh, with what happened was the advent of computers, uh, the internet and other information and communication technologies uh, brought about significant changes to individuals and communities across the globe. So what we wanted to do was offer, offer a, a tightening up of our region. So, um, so whatever happened, in particular gaps existed between those that were considered to have access to ICT services and those who did not. So we find that there is a different type of divide. There's a divide from the city to the country. Now, for an example, in, in Buckham, one of the prob problems that we had is uh, the expense of people being online. We had to address those sort of issues as well. Uh, for an example, we had one little old lady who went to uh, download a YouTube video and it ended up costing her around $100 extra on her account. So there's a lot of these little problems in Buckingham. You cannot get Optus um, at all, so you can only get Telstra. So you have also the problem of during peak time, uh, the computer playing up and other people trying to get online. Uh, so we worked on uh, what sort of gaps were there and how to address them. Because in Australia, the digital guide has been identified for these two regions. And so now we hope that the reporting that we've done and the things that we've done to do towards this will now allow the government to step in and say, well, how do we fix that? How do we solve these problems? The beauty is that uh, Buchan was getting pushed up to 4G. Is that correct, uh, Ev? Did that actually happen? Uh, we were advised that that would happen in November. Um, of last year, but um, in since talking to Telstra, uh, they haven't even done some of the bigger towns, and they mainly do the towns along the highways. And part of the issue for Buchan is that it's not actually on the main highway. However, it does have um, a place called the Buchan Caves, which is um, a tourist, a very important tourist attraction in Victoria. And due to the number of visitors to that place, um, we certainly um, uh, get put up the list as far as not being on the highway. So we are still waiting, and I believe only recently, um, and I know if Peter's still with us, um, I believe that um, Lakes Entrance has now got 4G, but we are still waiting, um, and it could be um, a few months more yet. So one of the main pro parts of this project that we were doing was to address this situation and to work out how do we make these two regions, the, the town region and the country, sort of a little bit more accessible. The project itself has worked beautifully and we've been able to access other areas within the community to join us, but we'll go in a little bit more about that later. Um, next time, we'll just bring Eric back to the microphone again. Evelyn, would you like to talk about the launch of the project? Or I would love to. Goodness, sorry, Janita, I did exactly what you did. I thought I'd press my microphone and I didn't. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, we launched the project on Monday the 3rd of September and uh, at our launch we had our local members, for, which are uh, from the National Party, uh, Mr Kimball, and we also had uh, Darren Chester, who's our federal member. Quite a successful day and particularly in bringing to their attention um, some of the issues and, and some of the problems that uh, occur for smaller communities to be able to access um, information online. Um, so also wanted to expand earlier that um, one of the 
part, one, one of the offers of the MBN is for smaller communities or rural communities who don't have the optic fibre to be given the access to NBN satellite. But unfortunately, as of about a month ago, there are no more places available um, for country people to apply for the NBN satellite. So again, it's been a bit unfortunate that um, our rural sector is um, again falling behind in its ability to access um, its internet. One of the other issues that we also have is that within the town, um, if we have access to Telstra and the Telstra tower or, or mobile access, you can only purchase your internet from Telstra. There is no other provider. And I'm not sure if um, people are aware, but Telstra is a very expensive um, uh, uh, internet provider to use um, and again so we're, we're sort of against it financially for communities. We've also in over the years also had to pay for our television. Um, it's only been in the last two years that um, our television um, reception has been free as well. So there's always increasing costs um, and also where we live there are, um, we're not that far, we're in the, the range of the Snowy Mountains, which is also makes up one of the um, highest mountains in Australia, being Mount Kolyosko. So we also have the difficulty of our terrain because um, most of our towers only work as a line of sight. So our launch was well attended and um, enjoyed by all. Am I talking to this slide too, Janita? I'm not sure. I haven't got a name on it. Yes. Yes, Evelyn. Oh, okay. Okay, so by providing now access to ICT, and, and that I mean by through education um, and assisting people to grow on the internet, one of the main jobs that we did um, as well during this time is actually helping people with getting uh, internet access at home. It's very confusing and uh, often some of the information that the community is given is sometimes misleading as well. So we have um, assisted our community personally on being able to put their internet on at home and also teaching them how they can connect up to that, whether it be um, direct with the Ethernet cable or using a wireless system and a modem. Um, people really needed to have that sort of information because their digital literacy is quite low. So for us to at least be able to be here to hold their hands through these processes, it makes it a lot easier because as we understand, sometimes the process of government and forms um, and phone calls can be very difficult, particularly uh, nowadays when um, uh, often when you contact some of the phone numbers when you're trying to get internet, whatever, there's often a long wait as well. And people get very frustrated and sometimes they're spoken to with terms or references that they haven't heard before. So we really need to make things in a simple language, um, easy for people to understand and so that people can feel and, and need I say it, sometimes they really need some face-to-face support to be able to get them through these uh, uh, opportunities. Of course today uh, people are realising that more and more uh, they will need to access the internet for their information and people on Centrelink uh, is one such example that um, <coughs> uh, to, to get information or, or to pass on information to Centrelink if you don't want to travel, you can use their online facilities. People too in the country are able to access uh, banking, uh, online banking because our banks and our shops here are uh, 65 kilometres one way trip. So for being able to save 10 to $20 in petrol by being able to do their banking at home. And the other huge uh, advancement that we've had in our region is uh, online shopping. Again, we only have uh, limits 
to the types of shops and the distance that we need to travel. So people are now able to access their um, shopping. <laughs> excuse me, access their shopping uh, through through using the online service. So our post office as a business has actually um, uh, really. Um, Sorry, I've just been put off. Our, our post office as a business has really grown due to the number of people that are buying online. And you'll particularly see at our post office during December, there's quite a number of um, boxes and things everywhere from people purchasing their Christmas presents. So it's been a really important way for people to change some of their habits. Um, it's also been a really good way to advertise and promote events to people. And um, either using the Facebook or the website, or we've also um, within this project have put together a Google Calendar, which is under our um, Bucking Community Gmail. And so now, if we have community events, we're able to put it up on our calendar, and we are able to send our invites to our community members, um, which they receive then by email. We also use our community calendar to um, give notices that uh, you know the meeting's on next week, or the meeting's on in half an hour, or meeting's on in two days. Whichever way we set the program, that way people can be reminded. A lot more people nowadays too are using smartphones, so we have noticed that. Um, by giving these little reminders and using the Google calendars, that people have that uh, information on them and, and can see straight away um, whether they need to be somewhere or do something or, or tend a barbecue. So we have found it's been a uh, really a great way to start to get the community to communicate together. Of recent times, uh, we have been affected by fires, um, and unfortunately, I do apologise. My tablet just went off. We've been using a app called a Fire Ready app, and you're able to create areas, uh, watch areas that are close to your home, and these will send out notices to you if there is any fire activity in your area. Um, we've noticed quite a number of our people have these on their phones and on their laptops and, and also their tablets. And we have also found that by promoting and giving information on our Facebook page um, about the Community Fires, it has been a really uh, huge way of passing on information fairly quickly. People, um, we, we increased our Facebook quite interestingly in the last month due to fires. Um, we had 400 members on our Facebook page, which you know is a lot for us. We, we're quite pleased with it. Um, and over one weekend, when we we're actually under fire threat, um, we um, increased our membership by 50. So we increased our membership to our Facebook page by a fifth. We had a lot of people join who used to live in Buchan, uh, people who are friends of people who live in Buchan, and relatives, all trying to get information and local information. One of the things we've really found that's quite useful for uh, the Facebook page is actually posting photos. Even though people are giving uh, written information or, or um, there's usually the banner on the ABC on what is happening, if they can actually see photos of the situation, it really helps people to understand. Um, so we've been able to take pictures when the strike vehicles, um, which are four-wheel drives that go out and fight fires, We've really been able to show pictures of those in town, all the fire trucks, and people can then see how many fire trucks there are, and probably sometimes feel a little bit more rest assured that something is um, happening in their area and in their hometown, because only a few of us actually live within the township itself. Um, we were also able to post photos of the fires, um, and that way people could also see um, how small or large they were and what it looked like for us. And at the moment, as I sit in Buchan today, um, it is extremely smoky. 
um, has been for a number of weeks now um, and there's a lot of back burning going on so people are living in um, still under threat and it also creates uh, anxiety and um, concern by some people in, in our community and we just feel that the thing going on um, Facebook and people having a chat and, and saying how they're going rest assures their relatives and um, friends as well and each other to be able to get together. So in some ways I think our Facebook has, has been probably our best form of increased communication over the terms of this project um, and people are, are very happy to use it and, and to learn more about it but we certainly needed to provide that general education in the first place for them to be able to do that. Um, we feel that, oh thanks, so I'm probably just about done on there, thanks. Hi everyone, um, it's my turn to jump in now and welcome everyone. Uh, yeah, the, the Bucket Project was amazing in the fact that we did quite a bit of online and face-to-face -face training sessions. The online stuff was actually supported in-house um, with Janita and uh, yeah, we covered pretty much everything that people wanted to know. I guess some of the really interesting things thinking about what Janita and Ev have already said so far where people were using, uh, particularly now using the shopping facilities and, and how much that post office has grown, it's probably kept them all in jobs which is a great thing, um, but a lot around staying smart online and staying safe online, uh, different ways you could buy things online and not um, not put your uh, bank accounts at risk, on online banking, all of those things, right through to things like genealogy, uh, tracing your family tree, that was an, an excellent session we had as well. Um, things like Google Hangouts for people um, to be able to conduct their hobby club um, meetings or their board of management meetings. Um, there's a few, I think in the slide coming up after this one with Janita, she's going to talk about a lot of the partnerships that were formed with different associations around uh, the area as well which, which were amazing but um, yeah we pretty much covered uh, anything and everything, a lot on file management and just, just being able to get into that computer and get on things like Facebook and use that for communications and uh, using Gmail, just um, using their iPads. A lot of people, as Ev said, have smartphones and iPads and tablets these days, uh, not necessarily a, the, the full body computer. So it was about helping people to recognise the potential of the devices that they had and to um, sort of recognise what they could do with them and what things were at their fingertips, not only to learn online in a sense of, of learning all this new technology, but also about becoming connected and becoming better citizens within their community through those connections. Um, yeah, so I might leave it at that and, and in a minute when we ask the questions, if there's any questions specifically, yeah, and I look, um, Geneva's just put there that I was in Perth for a lot of that time, so the, the beauty of that was that I could actually connect in and deliver online all the way from Perth, which I spent about six months in Perth uh, beginning of last year, and so to be able to uh, continue on with this project and being in from Perth was amazing. Uh, we did have a few internet problems as we found out before with back and relying on satellite and um, we tried to make our webinars at a time in the morning where there weren't school kids getting on and off the bus and all using the internet where internet would drop out. We sort of tried to uh, make that uh, the best time of the day where we'd get maximum internet potential but also um, the other thing was bringing people into the centre, so bringing that, bringing people that might, necess might not necessarily have come into the centre as much, bringing them into the centre to join the online sessions actually from Buckham Neighbourhood House increased, I suppose, the um, 
potential there for Buck and Labelled House, but also bringing people together in that face-to-face -face, so it was more of a social networking uh, as well as a learning experience for them. Um, okay, so I might move on to here and let Janita share with you some of the amazing local community and regional partnerships that were, that were born out of this project. Over to you, Janita. Thank you, Kat. That was great. Uh, to marry up with the online training, what we did was we had a face-to-face -face component with this project. So each week I would travel um, with another colleague, Fiona, to Buchan. Uh, every Thursday we would spend the day at Buchan and people would come into the centre and bring their laptops, their iPads, their um, uh, uh, Androids, whatever they had, and they would bring them into the centre where we would sit them down and slowly go through all the information and anything that they wanted to learn. So what the basis of the training was, it was requested. So if someone came in and said, I need to know how to use my Windows 8 computer, we would then organise the training for that person to learn that Windows 8 computer. So a lot of the training was... Um, organised so that it was for the individual and that was the beauty of this program because at one time you might have four people sitting in the room all on a different device all wanting something new so we would just move around the room and show them things to do and give them a task to try and to try and do it. We had a lot of successes so where were these people from? We had a lot of businesses. We had a lot of people from different businesses around the region, as far as now and now up to the Galantope, across up to Orbost and even up to Tubbet. Now, these people would come in and would ask different advice and opinions on how to use things. And some of the things that the businesses wanted to use were fairly simplistic. Things like um, how to use their Google calendars, how to put together uh, so that they've got one lot of calendars coming in, just simple things that would make their business lives a lot simpler. We taught them a lot about Dropbox, places, things like that. Now also we had the uh, tutor come in and run a mental health first aid course and beamed it out to up to uh, Tubbett where a couple of women that worked at the Tubbard Stable House there were able to attend this online session. It was new for the trainer, so we, we sat with her and helped her through that, and that worked quite successfully. We also went up to the Galantope Bush Nursing Association and spent a day up there and went up for their big morning cup of tea and had a demonstration and showed them a little workshop on how to use IT. And they were really thrilled. And what we found up there was really interesting because they had an amazing uh, internet connection way up in the mountains there, and that was because it was coming in for the centre. So we realised that the reality is these, this technology can reach there because it already is. It just needs that infrastructure to get it all there. Uh, during the time, we worked with the Buckham Primary School as well, and we had Penny Bentley, who's here with us, come along and help us with that. And her and I had a good uh, time online meeting the headmaster there and talking to him about the things that he was interested in and we set him up with Edmodo. Uh, we also had Hayfield come on board, the Hayfield neighbourhood house, they've become a part of what's going on at Buchan. Uh, because of what we've done, we've been able to pick up more projects, so we're doing a bit more project work for Learn Local, so we're also doing a bit of, um, and been offered a bit of project work with the La Trobe University uh, on ageing and memory. So because of this, these are the sort of things that are coming out from it. Uh, we've got involvement with the local shire now and many of the businesses in town. We've also got a program for seniors in Buchan. And also why, what we were able to do there is we had a PD day where we invited the participants that come to the Broadband for Seniors and the Buckham Project and married that together. So we're, we've been really thrilled with the uptake, with the interest and with the offers that we've had. So we're all sort of now uh, employed again. The, the team is employed again for another six months working on a project called uh, Gippsland Learn and Connect for ACFI. And so we've got a lot happening and it's really buzzing up there in, in uh, Bucken and we're really thrilled with what the things that we've done so far. So we'll just move on. 
So where to from from now? So I think it's a good idea if F comes to and just sort of tells us about where where's Buckin heading now. Okay. <clears throat> One of the things that we've uh, really found that it uh, sometimes it's it's a slow process. It takes a long, long time, particularly for people who are new to using uh, computers and the internet. Sometimes we get uh, a little bit of say or, or we start to get so used to doing things like online webinars or tutorials online and using services or, or even uh, the Oz Live, Aussie Live. It becomes sort of a second nature to us but certainly for people who um, haven't had that experience before or, or um, haven't been involved before in that sort of process, it really does take some time to slowly move people over to using their computers for more um, than what they realise and, and how they can educate themselves or, or find out other information or even just create connected communities or, or um, joining communities of similar interest to themselves. So we certainly have found that we will be continuing to uh, support our community with training and um, as people have started to get to know that the Buckham project was working or happening, some people just take a little bit longer to, to, to sort of change. So we're continuing to give some of that face-to-face um, -face training to people to assist them in trying to learn about what, what their computers can do for them and what sort of things they can find on their computers that they could uh, help them in their work or in their hobbies or even in connecting with other people. So we've continued to um, support our community. We certainly continue with um, our Facebook page and look, in some ways it can be really time consuming but in other ways it can also um, save you time in the long run because you are actually reaching a number of people. My suggestion would be to that if it was at all possible to try and arrange a volunteer at some stage that would like to take up the role of um, running the Facebook page. Um, but you know, sometimes it just takes a little bit longer to get people to take on those positions. Our um, community website, which we really continue to develop, and uh, we've just found that there's been um, so much uh, interest and so much information that's gone into that website that we really need to have another look at it and give it a bit of a clean up and a bit of a, a snazziness because uh, in some ways it's got a little bit of information overload and if people were uh, uh, given too much information on the pages that are open, they sometimes sort of don't look favourably at those websites. So definitely a cleaning up of our website and a continued promotion of our website. And the other thing that uh, we're really excited about um, putting together is an app for the Buckin Township itself. And at present this app will be mainly for visitors and we'll look at the sorts of things that you could do in our town, uh, where you could stay, uh, where you can eat, and the types of services that we're able to provide while people are, um, are visiting in our region. We do hope that that would be really helpful because people actually come here and they're quite surprised that all our services, petrol and, and shops close at 5 p.m., particularly when they're from the city and they expect uh, 24 hours of service. Um, and sometimes we'll even get caught out with no petrol if they haven't realised that, you know, a bit of planning. Um, also, it helps for people to understand that we don't have banks here, but only FPOS. And of course, our shop owners are a little bit limited on, on how much money they can um, give um, on their FPOS. So it's a great way to be able to tell them, look, this is who we are, this is what we have. It might be wise to bring some money with you, um, ensure that you're getting your petrol during the day, um, just things like that to just make it a, a much better and more pleasant experience for people who are coming to visit. So we're really excited about um, our app and uh, we'll be really excited to see how it goes into the future. Um, and uh, I suppose that's about all from here unless um, 
Janita or Kat think of anything else that I may not have covered? Uh, I think also one of the things that we have the found... Chat. I, I could see also that one of the things that it has benefit is that now we know that there are a certain amount of people that are able to get online so that when we offer some training, they've already got that inside knowledge. Oh, yeah, that's what they do down there at Bucken. And it's amazing how many people will say to me, oh, look, you guys at Bucken will know. I'm just ringing up and finding out. Can you help me? Because we now got this uh, little reputation in the town that you go to the neighbourhood house to get your ICT help. And I think that's been a real positive thing for the town. Plus the one thing that, as, a, as I live in Bansdale, I don't live in Buckham itself, and what I found was it is a very proactive community. The community are very, um, are very, they do a lot of things together. They're very involved in their sports with every, uh, and everything else. And that's why that, that website's working quite well, because they're in control of their own little sections on there. So I actually think it was a very interesting experience. It's been wonderful working out of Bucken and learning to meet the community. The project's been absolutely wonderful just watching the outer regions be able to understand what we're doing to make things easier for the future. So we're hoping that eventually out of Bucken, on behalf of um, Axi and Learn Local, that we'll be able to also extend that reach So we're with the new projects that we're working on. But what we would like now is, has anyone got any questions they would like to ask us? Because we'd love to answer them. Please come to the microphone and ask us some questions. Um, Janita, first question is from Veronica, who came in halfway through. Could you just tell us again the population of the community, please? Evelyn? Yeah, I can do that. Um, we probably have about 500 people within our region. Um, what we're, we're in a valley uh, with one side of the snowy mountains or, and uh, we, our community sort of runs in a long line up to the border of New South Wales, Victoria and New South Wales. So approximately 500 people live in our region or, or an area that we see ourselves as servicing, but we only have about 120 people within the township itself. So most people are living just out of town, and that could be anything up to 20 k's from the centre of the town uh, going in all four directions, north, south, east and west. Um, beyond our townships, as we head about 30 k's away, it becomes extremely rural and remote. And uh, I'm going to have to apologise, my phone rang, which I cannot control. <laughs> I'm actually going to have to answer that, so I'll be back in just a sec. Yes, it's a, it's a whole district. The town itself is quite a small town, but it's the whole district that has all these, has the 500 or so people in the area. In the actual town, I think up all up, we probably got a, a, a representation of about about 80 or 90 people, I reckon, throughout the region that somehow uh, popped into uh, our presentation day or were some way involved. Uh, so it was a really good uptake to, considering the amount of people within the community. Any more questions? And uh, Kat, would you like to come and tell people about what you're doing with the app, please? I will, yes, just to answer some of those app questions because it can be a bit confusing. It, we sort of started off off with uh, just the iPhone, but I'm also, um, will release an Android version as well at the same time. And then I'm thinking, well, you know, if you've got the iPhone, you've got to have the app, the iPad as well. And then you're sort of thinking Windows 8 Metro app, and then you've got like apps for computers, because we don't want to sort of uh, rule anyone out that maybe has a computer and not any other device. So there could be multiple versions of this app coming out. It is, it's huge. It'll be huge. <laughs> so when, when we release it, we'll have to put it out there for all of you to come and have a look and, and give us some feedback. But um, I mean, once you get that first bit of code written, then it's just a matter of, um, uh, yeah, moving on to some of the other platforms with it. The, 
but hopefully it, it'll look good. I mean, it's looking good so far. We're just playing with some graphics in there at the moment. It's pretty close to release. All the the bulk of the the main bulk of the information um, is in there and ready to go. So. It's been my first experience at building an app. I've, I'm a bit of a, um, I don't know what you call it, a geek, I suppose, in that uh, that sort of coding and all of that area of the computer really excites me. So I've really enjoyed doing that part of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether I'd call myself a guru just yet. We'll see. We'll see if um, we'll see if the app rolls out okay first. <laughs> Okay, Ever, are you ready to come back or are you still on, on the phone? Oh, okay. No, I'm back. There we go. I, I do apologise. I did say to my, my son was ringing me to arrange pick-up time <laughs> this afternoon. So, uh, yeah, I do apologise. I did say to him we had to be really quick. Um, yeah, I don't know if anyone else has any other questions. That would be fantastic. No, I don't know if you realise, but in your audience now, we had a few people come in later. So you have Paul from India, uh, from a lovely tourist place called Kerala, and you've got Veronica from Ipo in Malaysia, and you had B from Japan. So even though you're talking Australia, and we probably know a lot of these things, these people also come from communities that would benefit from similar programs to what you've done. Um, also, Janita, I am really sorry, but I need to go soon too. So, would you be happy to wind up the session and answer all questions, please? No problem. If there's no more questions, everyone, what we might do is uh, wind up and say thank you very much. And uh, what we we will put the Buchan website into the text chat. And uh, please, if you've got any more questions, we're going to be here for another five minutes and we're really happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Okay, I would just quickly just like to say that um, I, oh goodness, the writing went so quick. I've actually put the website on which is bucken.vic.au, so a fairly easy one. And I was just going to also type in that you can also Google Bucken in Victoria, Australia. and. Uh, and uh, find out a bit more about us, our caves, um, where we are. You can have a look on uh, maybe the Google Maps as to where we're situated and um, get some more information about um, where we are and who we are and the people that we're working with. Evelyn, I think uh, Paul, and Paul has, is asking, did we get any money and assistance from the government for the project? Maybe you would like to explain to Paul and Veronica exactly what financial assistance that we end up getting. Yeah, I'd be happy to do so. We, um, I actually received the information about a grant through my emails, through my work, and it was through the State Library of Victoria who are very interested in online information and communications. And uh, we were able to apply for $21,000 to assist us in running this project over a period of 18 months. So um, it was one of those things that just came in the inbox and um, we had already been very interested in um, being online, using Facebook, connecting our community through just some other smaller projects that we, we had been working on. And so this really took our interest and we thought, well, you know, we are the rural and isolated. We are the ones that could really get, you know, get some advantages of having communities that um, have more knowledge and information about um, their computers and what they can do. So that's kind of how the project um, came about. So the State Library, is, as Janita has written, is funded by the Victorian Government. More questions, anybody?
Oh, thank you. Um, also, Veronica, um, just quickly, it's very hard to read through the chat. It, it scrolls so quickly at times. Um, but yes, if you're willing to introduce your Malaysian students, um, they can certainly contact us and um, you know, we may even be able to do some student exchange if you're interested as well. I don't know what sort of um, funding systems you have, Paul, in, in India, but um, it's certainly worth something to look at. Uh, one thing that we could, probably could help you with is to give you an idea, if you want to give us your email, is give you an idea of the type of um, information that we put forward to, to get that funding. So in other words, we, we can give you an idea of the type of language that was used to, to the government to see if we could get that funding. Thanks, Veronica. I'll take your email now. I'll cut and paste that. Oh, if it'll let me. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so that's the last question. I'll turn off the recording now and say thank you very much, everyone, for coming along. and. Um, if everyone wants some information, no problem. I oh, will write down all your emails and I'll email them off to Ev for her. Thank you very much for coming, everyone. Bye.